In November 2012, the Financial Stability Board released its report into strengthening oversight and regulation of shadow banking. In anticipation of this, Allen and Overy undertook research to understand the effects this regulation is having on credit flows in 14 key jurisdictions around the world. With Basel III already affecting traditional bank lending, we now believe the FSB's proposed policy framework could seriously limit the ability of shadow banking to fill the funding gaps left by banks. This is especially troubling when the FSB's own statistics show that banks are the only institutions to have increased their share of financial assets in the last five years, up $26.6 trillion since 2007, but lending levels have remained constrained. Our research shows that the growing number of rules across the global financial system lack the coherent design necessary to facilitate an orderly flow of credit. Moreover, we question whether regulators have thought through the consequences of their individual plans. Different implementation across certain international borders is already leading to potential arbitrage opportunities, the situation that regulators were precisely trying to avoid. In the EU alone, new bank regulation is expected to run to 60,000 pages. Few people understand what all the new regulations mean, and even fewer how it all fits together. Allen and Overy's impact analysis assesses if the proposed regulations are likely to have a positive, neutral or negative impact on the provision of credit across 11 separate areas of finance in 14 key jurisdictions. For each key jurisdiction, we examine the effect of legislation in the availability of 12 financial products from a range of entities including banks, investment funds, insurers and asset managers. Looking carefully at each jurisdiction, our team of regulatory experts identified that the net effect of current regulation is producing far more roadblocks than green lights. The reason why we're calling for action is that uh, four years down the line uh, following the crisis, uh, we are seeing a huge amount of regulation, thousands and thousands of pages impacting in particular banks, but not only banks. But what we are failing to see is the step back and the take a look at the cumulative effect of all of this. And, and effectively, from a policy perspective, what do regulators want to see happening with credit? Who is it to come from and in what quantities? Uh, we're seeing a lot of disabling, a lot of, if you like, uh, over-ratcheting of regulation, but we're not seeing the uh, intellectual design behind it that is supposed to actually take a look at what the real economy requires at this point in time and, you know, marrying the two together. Despite all the changes, banks will remain the pivotal players in structuring large, complex financial transactions where multiple pools of capital need to be accessed. In addition to banks, there is a greater scope in most of Europe for lightly regulated and unregulated investment funds to be able to provide credit and help fill the funding gap. Europe's regulated funds, USITs, are a clear source of funding in the bond and cover bond markets. Here there is an opportunity for regulators to liberalise these structures to enable them to take a broader role in the credit markets. There is also still great untapped potential in the insurance market. Indeed, the neutral regulatory outlook could be seen as positive for insurers given their relative competitive position against other market participants. We believe that policymakers need to take a long, hard look at the cumulative effect of this massive regulatory reform agenda. In particular, the authorities must consider what steps they can take to free up the provision of beneficial credit, whether from traditional or alternative sources. If policymakers fail to take a radical approach to this issue, we believe business will continue to struggle to access finance with clear and massive consequences for broader economic growth around the globe.